Carlo and Brendan here from Games, Brains and Headbanging Life. GBHBL.com for sure. And it's track by track time. Taking a look at an album released this year, in fact, January 26, 2024, via Season of Miss. It's Legend from the Technic French Technic French Technical Death Metal Band Exocrine. Uh, this, I chose this because this was the first 10 out of 10 album I gave this year. Uh, I loved it that much. And I was like, yeah, I think Brennan's going to absolutely have a blast with this one as well. And I figure this is a great opportunity as track by track stuff on R to say, cool, listen to this. Yeah, which I did. Uh, I, it's definitely interesting. Mm, okay. are, we'll, we'll see how, how it goes throughout it. Well, I've kind of given the game away on my end, but we will get yeah. into it and we begin with Presage. It's an intro, but an intro that you will take note of Exocrine showing some melodic depth and how quickly things can turn dark, bringing forth a clattering of heavy instruments that chug along with the weight and devastating power of a runaway train. For me, this is such an exciting start. It's to kind of like, oh yeah, this is going to be something special. This is going to be quite intense. And that's, I love that for it. Yeah, I really like this as well. I think it uh, sets the atmosphere well, and I like the twanging kind of melody alongside the big echoing drums. Um, there's a nice kick in that I wasn't expecting because I, I genuinely thought it was going to stay melodic and then kick in as it went into the second track. Um, but it doesn't, so it surprised me when it did. It's very, very cool. It's got big, chunky riffs. It's heavy. Uh, the drums had a probably not fair comparison, but for me, quite a big kind of orbit culture style mm. and sound to them. Uh, and it leads quite nicely into the next track. So, yeah, it's a good start. That I think is a totally fair comparison, particularly current Orbit Culture's drum sound as well, which quite familiar with. So when you are getting those heavy beats, you really notice them. Uh, Legend, the title track. The intro transitions into this track and the progressive technical fire is well and truly burning out. It is erratic, but it's also seriously emphatic as the brutality sounds epic. How about, though, that jazzy section? It is mental. One of the most unique moments on the entire record. And I think, I thought it then, and I still think now, gobsmacking. <laughs> yeah, so obviously ridiculously fast uh, is probably the first thing I got from it. Uh, I do find it a bit strange. Mm -hmm. It's not the most on this track, to be honest with you, but is the kind of lead guitar virtuoso almost like, I don't know, like they've got like a, an Eric Clapton or a Stevie Vai, like who's not even in the band, just doing his own thing. <laughs> because the tone of the lead guitar, this sort of virtuoso <laughs> style guitarist soloing alongside the very, very intense riffing and drumming, I find it a little weird. I find that it doesn't sit, they don't suit each other sometimes mm. um i really like the vocals nice and deep very very heavy very very menacing uh overall it is it's an extremely quick song and because of that i do find at times that it's quite difficult to get in tune with and everything just blends in sections not all the time but just in sections of it uh so like if you said to me like oh, i don't know in the middle of a certain section and it's like pick out the guitars i'd be like well i don't know if i can because it's just like a wall of noise you know which is like i said that's not necessarily a bad thing that's just what i was getting from it uh, when it drops into that bluesy kind of jazzy stuff, the contrast is very cool. Weirdly for me, and actually this this is a genuinely true. Like I did, I wasn't that surprised by it mm. purely because I, I I've been listening to it, and on that same day had been listening to a band called Meslam Tear, uh, uh. who I reviewed a while ago, whose whole thing was they would do extreme black metal, and then all of a sudden out of nowhere there'd be a saxophone playing. Yeah, and it's only because I'd been listening to it that day, and when they did it, I was like. It, it's, it's unfair on this one because any other time I would have been surprised and it was only because I'd been listening to it literally that day. Crazy coincidence. Yeah, uh, but like it's a very, very similar thing, but I still like it and it's not exactly that fucking common within metal. So like it's still cool. Um, I think the chorus is cool. A few different vocal tones in there. A lot of cool lead guitar moments too. So I'm just like a very, very strong solo. So I like it a lot, but I don't feel I really instantly gelled with it. So mm. I, I found it a little bit confusing at times. But I do think it's the sort of thing that I will listen to again and, and, and get get it after a few listens, you know. It's in my best of 2024 pl playlist. <laughs> so that says what I feel about it. But I also really, really enjoy life. I think this one is deceivingly catchy in the way that Metal's Intense shouldn't actually be catchy. But there you go. Immense guitar riffing and soloing. It's blisteringly fast and brutally heavy. heavy. And it was this moment three tracks in or two in an intro and i was like yep i'm in love with this record 
Yeah, I, I like this one very much. Um, I very much enjoy the intro here. I think the intermittent drums are solid and the tapping lead guitar is cool. Uh, still very heavy. Still love the vocals. I love the vocals on the first one as well. Uh, you know, um, yeah, just nice and dark and really like aggressive. Uh, I feel from maybe it maybe it helped because I now had heard the previous songs that I kind of I don't know maybe felt like a I knew what was coming, so I felt a little bit more in tune with this and what to expect. I still find that the most pacey moments, the points when they go the fastest, creates quite a weird kind of blend of noise where it isn't easy mm. to pick out a note or a beat or anything like that it kind of becomes that wall of sound. Although I don't mind that um here at all and i really like the chorus too i think there's some catchiness there a slight elevation in the vocal tone works wonders too very very impressive drums which is a a, a thing that will probably be happily say across pretty much every song um so yeah i overall like this one a lot i think it's very good Oh, uh, I'm glad you mentioned the drums because I'm going to mention them now with Elon. Uh, the drums have been beastly up to this point. Uh, you can't ignore them. But this is this is the first track where I think, good God, they stand out more than any other instrument, even though everything instrumentally is impressive on this. And of course, those fucking vocals. This is another absolute banger for me. Just comes away, hits me hard, and I'm loving it. Yeah, it's got a nice start with an interesting quirky structure, very, very cool drums again, nice and crunchy and speed riffing, but also a nice switch up with the vocal tone. So it genuinely feels quite intense, very, very heavy, and the overall speed and aggression uh, clashes quite, but like in quite an interesting way with that lead guitar tone again. Um, but like not, not in a way I dislike here. It's quite interesting here, even though I think like it sounds to me, it's not, I know, but it sounds to me like there's a heavy metal band playing like aggressive music here. And there's some dude in the other room just practicing his like virtuoso guitar stuff. And they was like, I'll just come do some of that shit on our music. So I wrote down like at some points, I love the solo, by the way. But uh, and, and I did also point out that even in the solo, though, the drums are so good in that solo that I, I, I find myself focusing on the drums and thinking like the drums have just stolen the solo. <laughs> and then I wrote down that I didn't put this in any sort of segue within a sentence. I just wrote down like, do you know what it's like with this guitar sometimes? It sounds like. Like uh, and I just put it down like a uh, Richie Sambora from Bon Jovi being invited to play a solo for Deicide, mm, and then they're putting them oh together. Like like not because I don't dislike any of them or like that, but because of the different styles, and that's what I felt like the guitar's tone doesn't always seem like it's suited to the other stuff that's going on. Mm. Sometimes I dislike that. Sometimes I liked it. I quite liked it here. I thought it was odd but interesting, uh, and it's certainly making me think. You know, it's challenging enough and different enough that it's keeping me very engaged and making me really, really sort of concentrate and think about what's happening. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, it is an engaging album, um, as you say, when you're trying to pick it apart. And that continues into The Altar of War. Incredible form this band is on continues into this one. It is a headbanger through and through. The speed is so fucking intense. It's danger beyond normal expectations. There's fast technical metal and then there's things that Exo Queen are doing. And I think it shows in tracks like this. Yeah, a big fan of this one. I think there's a, some, I, I don't know. I don't remember what this was, but I wrote down there's a very strange noise in the start, but I don't even remember what that was now. Mm. But whatever it was, I thought there was a strange noise at the start. Um, I think the tone on the guitars is very weird, but again, it's interesting. And it kicks into another pretty vicious track where that clash of sounds, and again, in brackets, I just wrote, it's like brutal blackened death with clean rock guitar solos <laughs> crash, crashing together. Uh, some of the riffing and drums are ridiculous, managing to be very, very intense, very, very aggressive, but also having like definite catchiness in them too. I think the solo is cool and the slowed down drums and guitars add a touch of something a little bit more epic to the track. And yeah, so I'm a, I'm a big fan of this one. Cool. Uh, Dust on a Nought. A ditter to what I said before, basically. This is another one that is filled with absolute pure heaviness, but it's got a level of technical interest, interest, interestesies that need to be heard to be believed. I think this is one of the more complex sounding tracks, but it's also a lot of fun to pick that apart. I'm still having a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, so I wasn't expecting a gentler intro in this one, at mm -hmm. first, first of all, but I was expecting it to kick off any second now and then when it, and it does. And it's got a very big lead guitar sound that combines nicely with the aggressive drums, vocals and riffs. Fast and heavy again, but some neat vocal tricks, including that very, I, yeah, I love moments. I like little moments in songs. And like this, you can barely hear it, but there's a very, very hush, clean singing line that backs the harsh vocals every now and then, which I just like, it's so barely there 
that you could just have not put it there. But the fact that they did put it there, and then I I heard it, I was like, I appreciated that. Um, it is a messy track in the verses in that technical style, that technical way where, as you yep. know me, you know, it feels chaotic. It's difficult to grab a rhythm in at points. But I do quite like that here. I like the feeling of confusion and uncertainty it gives me. And I like the fact that I couldn't even remotely guess what's going to happen in this song second by second. So it's quite a lot coming at you, quite a lot hitting you, but it's quite exciting. Oh, Warlock. Uh, as much as I do love the technical side of this band, I also do like a track that can just come along and slam the mind, body and soul into the ground. This is less complex, but I should say that doesn't mean a lot here. Like that's not kind of suggesting that it's just uh, um, a shut your mind of kind of track because it's still exocrine. But it is more death focused. It's one of the more feral listens. I think it's one of the more straightforward blasts. Yeah, the first few words I wrote down were just fuck me, that's heavy. Um, <laughs> I love that. I think the flow of vocals is immense. It's nice to see a song that's actually more predominantly riff and drum driven. And there are plenty of moments in it, still big league guitar moments, a very cool solo and quite some good guitar work in the bridges as well. But there's also lots of moments where the song is a little bit more standard. Um, mm. And weirdly, this is weird. It's probably not weird. I was, I was trying to work this out in my head, right? If you have an album that's all pretty standard and then, they hit, then halfway through they hit you with a really creative song, that freshens it up and can usually like set you off the other ones. I kind of felt like they did this as well here, but the opposite way around. And the I really appreciated it. Yeah. It's like it's so much happening, so much happening that it was like, let's freshen it up by giving them one that's, we almost let them settle a little bit. Yeah. We don't go for again. And that weird, weirdly, that stripping that little bit of creativity out of this song actually makes the whole album feel more creative. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I think it's a hard hitting monster of a track and I really love this one. Yeah, I love the way you put that because it is refreshing to say just to have this because we do have after that three more tracks and it kind of just settles you down and goes, OK, whatever you bring with these, I can probably handle now rather than just go boom, 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 boom. Complex, yeah. complex, complex. Uh, we have Dragon, a spasm and blast of ordered chaos. It's laughable how talented this band are when it comes to technical death metal. The imagination continues to run wild, a level of heavy debauchery that constantly surprises. Never stops being interesting. Dragon is another fascinating one for me. Yep. Uh, it's, it's another good song. Uh, I love the tone of the lead guitar in the intro, screams emotion. And, and then, but again, I'm, you know, very firmly expecting whenever I get into a bit where I feel like, oh, that's nice or that's melodic or that seems quite emotional, I'm expecting it to then just kind of rip me throat out basically mm. you know um and and it does you know i think i wrote yep there it is shit's going down uh bit, bit of a technical vibe to some of the stop start stuff but and we're firmly in very aggressive and dangerous territory now i think there's a bit of a core crunch to the riffs which is quite cool the vocals are vicious really intense and powerful the drums which have not stopped impressing me once across the whole album are really going for it again here too and it's not just the fact that they are quick and they are quick there's a lot of very 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 fast drumming here but it's actually just little transitions in pace and power and a very, very quick switching of beats that really impresses. Uh, the solo again, and I wrote like this in brackets because I think for some people go either way and I wrote it, it contrasts or it clashes with the rest of the song. Mm. Uh, and, I, and sometimes I, I wasn't sure either way, like whether I liked it or whether I felt it was a clash, but um, I was really enjoying the heavy instrumental stuff near the end, hoping it would last until the end. Uh, which it doesn't quite because it switches to an acoustic melody just for the last 10, 20 seconds of it, which I yeah. could have happily done without, but it's still a very strong song. Okay, uh, penultimate track, The Oath. I love the ambient, spacey intro, followed by those crunching riffs and drums. I'm sold on this track from the start. However, it's got so much more to offer. Of course, we've got things like the drums just absolutely hammering away and the vocals reaching new depths. Those roars at the end are particularly insane. Yeah, it's got a quite a quirky start with some odd but not not unpleasant but odd melody. Uh transforms into a very heavy and dark song with heavy vocals, very guttural. Um pace is a little bit slower here, not much, mm. but a little bit slower, a bit meatier, and really hits quite hard with some chunky riffing. Um it keeps chucking in these completely contrasting lead guitars again, and there are some effects in this one that I don't really like too much. Not because there's anything wrong with them, but I just don't see why they're there. Mm. Um, they don't add anything for me. Uh, I like the melodic and quite short solo very, very much, and I like the main sections of quick drumming and hard hitting riffs too. So um, it's not it's not one of my favorites to be honest. I've just found moments in it, but also moments that I just thought were a little bit messier and a little bit harder to get into. 
Okay. And last but not least, by the light of the pyre. A track with a touch more cinema about it, I'll bet from a continued technical and heavy standpoint. It is a worthy finan finale. One of the more egregious examples of what Exa Queen can do. Yeah, it's got a very unexpected start for me based on what I'd heard so far on the album with that kind of mm. full menacing horror movie sounding orchestral stuff. Um, I liked it a lot, but they did disappoint me a bit, but it's, it's, it's such a minor disappointment. I'm sure they'll get over it in that. As we had like, what's that, you know, work whether it's violins, cellos or whatever kind of all going. And I was really hoping that the guitars or the drums or something would start coming in and it would all start right. coming together, but it doesn't. It just sort of does a hard stop on that and then goes straight into the metal. Like there's no blend there doesn't flow well yeah yeah minor thing like don't get me wrong i liked both of the sounds i was just like oh man i was hoping you're gonna do that um yeah i get over it quite quickly as i do like the tempo and rhythms of the heavy verses the drums are great again vocals are powerful the riffs are great clashes and contrasts are their thing so we move in some of that lead guitar work that sounds very different to the rest of the song but i don't mind it and then back into some really meaty death metal stuff i like the solo um the drums still the show in the early part of it again but then the guitar kind of fights back <laughs> takes takes control back um so it's strong uh what's that right here it's strong but listen to this solo and then try and remember the orchestral intro the heavy verse and i think it's hard oh. to associate them together i think that's Fair. what i was kind of going with it was like this yeah it's it's, it's like every there's so much to like i don't i don't want these things to sound like a negative because i really enjoyed this album and if i had been reviewing it i would have come in somewhere between eight and nine anyway like this is top quality stuff um I just sometimes, not in many of the songs, but in some of them, it feels like a collection of parts at times, which are all mm. really, really, really good, but just don't 100% always work perfectly well together. Uh, and then I did, I don't, because I don't want to end in negative. I weren't going to say the last time, but I just said, look, we then suddenly end the end of the song, we close out on a completely unrelated acoustic melody, which sounds like nothing that's been in the song at any point. So I don't even see how this is part of it. So, like, it's, it's strange sometimes. It's like I appreciate an awful lot of what's going on. I do think, I mean, I know I will listen to this album again because I know I've listened to it again since I listened to it for the track by track. And I do think I will become more in tune with it and that actually on a first listen, some of it was maybe more challenging to me than I was expecting it to be, but exciting enough that I am have done and will continue wanting to go back and listen to more of it. So It's left an impression. That's all anybody can yeah, ever definitely. hope, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, uh, top three tracks. Yeah, you can go first. Uh, okay, so my top three are Warlock, unsurprisingly, the simple one with not too much going on there. <laughs> um, the Altar of War and Life. Oh, I thought we were going to differ on all three, but we do match up on Life. Uh, obviously, I already praise Legend to the High Heavens, so that's my second one. And The Oath is my third. Those are my three favourite tracks. Um so I guess it's life. You would just want to check one out as we both agree on life. That's the one to, to give a go, but I do suggest listen to the full thing. Um, at least, uh, you know, see what you think. It is legend by Exa Queen. Track by track, you know what to do. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It is gratefully appreciated. You can find us over at gbhbl.com, our full website where reviews, news, and so much more goes up daily. We're also on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, threads, at GBHBL. Just search for GBHBL and you will find us out there. We also have merchandise on sale. You can access the shop via the website.